Imagine living in a house where the walls seem to whisper and strange things happen when you least expect them. Today's story is about a family who believed their home was haunted, only to discover something far more terrifying hiding in plain sight. In the quiet town of Townsend, Massachusetts in 1986, a family of three tried to move on after a tragedy struck. Brian Andrews, along with his two daughters, 16-year-old Annie and her younger sister Jessica, had recently lost their mother to cancer. The Andrews home sat on the outskirts of town, a big house with creaking floors and drafty windows, the kind of place that could make anyone's imagination run wild. Annie tried to distract herself from the loss, found herself on a blind date with a boy she had talked to on the phone. His name was Daniel Laplante. He told her he was tall, blonde, and athletic. However, when Annie opened the door, she was met with someone entirely different. This Daniel wasn't tall, nor blonde, nor handsome, but she decided to go out with him anyways, because how bad could one day be? What she didn't know was that this one night would spiral into a nightmare far worse than she could have ever imagined. After that awkward day with Daniel, Annie thought she could leave him behind and move on, but things around the house took a bizarre turn. It started with small, almost unnoticeable changes. Items like kitchen utensils were following themselves in different rooms, and furniture would shift slightly from where it was placed. At first, Annie and Jessica brushed it off. Maybe they were just misremembering where they put things, but soon it became impossible to ignore. Then came the knocking. Late one night, as Annie laid in bed, she heard a faint tapping sound coming from inside the walls. At first, she thought it was just the house settling, but then it happened again, and again. She sits up, listening closely, trying to figure out where the noise was coming from. The sound seemed to follow her movements, tapping from different parts of the wall as she walk, walked around the room. It felt deliberate. When she told Jessica about it the next morning, her sister admitted to hearing the same noises in her room. The tapping wasn't random. It would sometimes come in response to questions they asked, like some kind of twisted game. So the girls started to believe that their attempt at a seance in the basement had worked. But instead of contacting their mother, they had invited something else into their home, something darker. The tapping wasn't the only thing that unnerved them. Messages began appearing scrawled in the bathroom mirror and what looked like a child's handwriting. Phrases like, I'm still here, and come and play, would be written in the conversation after they showered, sending shivers down their spines. And then more unsettling things started happening. One morning, the sisters woke up to find the dresser's drawers open. And their clothes, particularly their undergarments, strewn across the room in strange patterns. Annie tried to rationalize this, thinking maybe Jessica was trying to play a prank on her. But deep down, both girls knew something was terribly wrong. They told their father, Brian, about the strange events, but he dismissed their fears as grief-induced paranoia. He believed they were struggling with their mother's recent death and suggested they stop dabbling in seances and ghost stories. But the girls couldn't shake the growing dread. The tapping continued, more insistent now, sometimes in the middle of the day, and it wasn't just knocking anymore. They started hearing faint whispers, like someone was murmuring right next to them, though no one was there. So one night after hearing another round of mysterious knocks, Annie and Jessica found a message waiting for them in their bedroom. I'm in your room. Come find me. That was the moment the girls could no longer handle it. They ran out of the house in a panic, convincing the entity, or whatever it was, had taken over their home. They believed they had summoned something malevolent that had no intention of leaving. Meanwhile, Brian's still unconvinced. He decided to go check things out himself. He searched the house top to bottom, finding nothing out of the ordinary, though he couldn't explain the increasingly bizarre behavior of his daughters. That is until one fateful night when everything changed. So after searching the house, Brian found words scribbled, cut. So after searching the house, Brian found words scribbled in what looked like blood on the basement walls. However, upon closer inspection, it was ketchup, clearly meant to terrify the family. He felt uneasy but tried to brush it off, convinced that his daughter's grief was filling their imaginations. But when he ventured to the upstairs bedroom, things took a horrifying turn. As he opened the door, he came face to face with Daniel Laplante, standing right in front of him wearing the clothes of his deceased wife. The shock was paralyzing. Daniel wasn't just a disturbed boy from a bad date. He had been living inside their house, watching their every move. 
Brian lunged at Daniel and a violent struggle broke out, with furniture crashing to the floor. Daniel, agile and desperate, managed to escape before the authorities arrived. But the police were determined to find out how he had entered the house and why the family had been terrorized for weeks. Their investigation led to a discovery that sent chills down everyone's spine. Behind a closet in Annie's room, they found a hidden crawl space. Inside was evidence that Daniel had been living there for weeks, surviving in the small cramped area, moving through the house walls without ever being detected. He had carved small peepholes into the walls of the bedrooms and bathrooms, spying on the family as they lived their lives, unaware of his constant presence. It became clear that all the strange occurrences, the knocking, the moving the furniture, the messages in the bathroom, were not supernatural at all. They were Daniel's doing. He had been lurking in the shadows. Cut. He had been lurking in the shadows, manipulating the family into thinking their house was haunted, enjoying the chaos and fear he caused from within the walls of their own home. Daniel was arrested but only received a life sentence for the terror he inflicted on the Andrews family. However, this wasn't the end of his story or his violence. Just a year later, he escalated to something far darker. He broke into another home, murdering a pregnant woman and her two children in cold blood. Daniel was finally caught and sentenced to life in prison, but the damage he had done would never fade. To this day, the tale of Daniel Laplante reminds us that sometimes the scariest things aren't the ghosts in our heads, but the real monsters hiding in the walls. So next time you hear a knock when no one's around, maybe just check behind the closet just in case. So if you enjoyed the story, then please hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment for any more recommendations. I would really appreciate that. Thank you and have a nice day.